mais j'aimerais maintenant que nous nous tournions euh, donc vers le, le monde région par région, en quelque sorte, pour entendre trois perspectives régionales. And the next speaker would be Juliette Toakli, uh, giving us a perspective from, from Africa and the African continent. Juliette. Good morning. Thank you. We learned several lessons from the COVID pandemic in Africa, not the least from observing what was happening elsewhere and looking into our own resources. And one of the major lessons, I believe, was a recognition of the need for strong political will and a focus on in-country public health systems. There was also a greater unity of purpose between countries in Africa. Yes, certainly there was a regional emphasis, but there was also a pan-African pan um, approach, which I think also was very helpful to us in the medical arena. There was certainly a recognition of the need to build our own capacities Uh, which thankfully was supported by international agencies' decision to build up African vaccine responses as a global public good. And of course, as many of you may remember, this was uh, partly in response to the uh, disappointment in how vaccines uh, had been promised and often uh, not delivered. We received barely a third of the promised vaccines ultimately And so there was a very rapid recognition of the need to change course that was supported. Um, and very strong support from the African CDC that was located in Addis Ababa. And we were very fortunate in having very strong leadership of that institution uh, through a Dr. John Nkengasong, who was the director of it at that time. He was absolutely magnificent. Unfortunately, because he was so magnificent, he's now been uh, swiped up by the US uh, government to manage PEPFAR, but still he has a worthy successor in place. And the CDC, the African CDC, harmonized and strengthened surveillance systems in a way that we had not experienced previously, as well as strategic sampling frameworks which was very important for identifying the different variants as they arose throughout the continent. He also focused on strengthening the supply chain once it had been developed and once it became apparent for the need to develop a strong supply chain of various goods and shared surveillance data across all country or all in-country programs. And you may remember Uh, after the B1 Omicron variant had been, uh, had been recognized in South Africa, uh, we were given daily, if not uh, twice daily, um, accounts of its gradual migration upward from Southern Africa to East Africa, West, up through North Africa, which allowed us to prepare um, adequately, at least to some extent. <coughs> Um, as it made that tran transmission across the continent. And number two, vaccine production uh, facilities <coughs> were developed. There were some incipient um, facilities available, but they have been considerably strengthened and enhanced across six African countries. We have 12 facilities that are based primarily in Algeria, Egypt, Morocco, Senegal, Rwanda, and South Africa. And these have been particularly effective and particularly strong in their output. We also, not we, but in Africa, there was a group, African Vaccine Acquisition Trust established, AVAT, that not only has focused on the manufacture of vaccines, but also manufacturing tests, treatments, and protective equipment, even though each country, of course, took on what they could locally um, 
and certainly Ghana was, was very busy in this regard. The CDC also ensured that there was uh, the, the development on of, a, of an Africa medical access supply chain for pharmaceuticals. This is currently based in Rwanda and has been very, very effective because of the impactful funding and support from many bodies that have included the African Union, the African Development Bank, PEPFAR, and WHO to mention but a few. I think it's shown that we have worked together as a collective in so far as we have already been faced with our new pandemic. Well, it's not quite a pandemic, I take that back. Our new <coughs> um, illness, i.e. Ebola, which showed up initially in West Africa and Sierra Leone, and then subsequently in Uganda, where it's been a little bit more severe. And, uh, but I think it is coming under control, not the least because of this group um, work together, um, especially by our in-country public health systems. And so I think we've really learned to work together, if you will, finally, in, in an aspect, an important aspect of our development, that being health and politically, insofar as it's been necessary to work in the public health arena but I'm quite proud of how we responded overall, and I do think we're well prepared for future outbreaks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Juliette. Um, and the, I think we'll come back to, to, to Africa and to regions in the next session, because clearly what we're seeing now is a, a welcome trend to decentralization and the regionalization of manufacturing, re of research and development and manufacturing. And that has implication when we will be discussing the governance uh, and whether sort of governance of health in the future, how much will that be global at the New York or uh, Geneva level or how much will that be a sort of federation of, of regional uh, governance hubs and how much regions in the future uh, will be uh, autonomous in, in, in their ability to prepare and to respond to pandemics. Let's now, um, maybe before uh, we move to uh, Yi De Chao, um, Juliette, can I turn to you and ask you what's the current status, what's the current vaccine coverage of healthcare workers in Africa? That was an, an issue, of course, in the, in the first year of the pandemic. Well, as you know, we did have an initial problem with accessing the vaccines, and then we had an uh, a political problem of which vaccines we would uh, encourage uh, per country and within certain countries and regions. But I would say that right now, and I'm not basing it on very specific facts, but uh, certainly anecdotally, I would say that most healthcare workers, perhaps 60% thereabouts, have been vaccinated. Because I think we were put into the position of having to recommend vaccination to populations that were um, somewhat uh, skeptical about um, the need for them, um, were skeptical about the onset and origin of COVID and their own exposure rates to it, because as, as you know, that notwithstanding the discrepancy of numbers of cases, I do think that Africa still did come in a little bit lower in terms of active cases or, and, and mortality. Um, and so I think that uh, there was a moral imperative for those involved in health to take the vaccine themselves uh, and then persuade the citizenry, if you will, especially high-risk citizenry, to vaccinate. Thank you very much. Can I...